How do we consider, uh, solve this J, two neutrons in J is equal to 5 now? Remember, we will be guided by the Pauli's exclusion principle. And what does Pauli's exclusion principle say? That no two fermions will have identical quantum numbers. Right? Now here, our fermion is the neutron. Okay. So, let me write down particularly the M1, M2 values of the two neutrons. And then let me write the sum of the values m1 plus m2. Let me do something like this. Okay, so j is equal to 5 half. So what's the maximum m1 can have? Follow 5 half. Right? 5 half. So what about m2? m2 value key have? If m1 is equal to 5 by 2, what is m2? Can it be 5 by 2? No. Now, Pauli's exclusion principle, had it been boson, had it been photon, two photons, then no problem. But we are considering fermions. So, m2 cannot be 5 by 2. What is the next number, lower number? 3, three by 2. 3 by 2. Okay. Similarly, again, 5 by 2. Here, what's the next number? Half. Half. Let me just not write this again. So let me write half. Okay, like this here. Next, minus half. Next, minus 3 by 2. Next, minus 5 by 2. That's it. This exhausts the possibilities. Ever on the sum point, let us do the sum. So, what is the sum here? 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Check for yourself. Yes, sir. Now, these are just m values. So, m means projection, right? Of the corresponding j. So, if m is m lies from 4 to 0, what will be the j value? So, this corresponds to J is equal to 4. Whatever. This corresponds to J is equal to 4. Okay? Now, let me write down the next possibility. Hey, Mone Hanchi, get cool as it. Mone Hanchi, check what that So, let me, so this corresponds to J is equal to 4. So, let's write down the next possibility. Next possibility will be J is equal to 3 by 2. Right? Now, the moment I write j is equal to 3 by 2, I cannot write this. Okay? Okay? So, I have to start with half, minus half, and then minus 3 by 2. Again, I am going to remove this. So, what are the possible values that we are going to get this time? So, the possible values that we are going to get this time, see what it is. It is 2 right 1 and 0 so what does it correspond to it corresponds to j is equal to 2 they can okay sir act on basic genius j corresponds corresponds to the projections corresponds to j is equal to 2 next possibility next to chevala g half okay sir so if I take half, I cannot choose half as well. So I have to choose minus half over here. And again, these values, I am just going to write it out. So as a result, I am just going to have one single m projection. Zero. Where can we have that? Only this is possible only if j is equal to zero. Now, so what we observe is that we are getting j is equal to 4, j is equal to 2, j is equal to 0. Okay? You have just taken the positive values. You can do the reverse as well. You start with minus 5 by 2 and on that side you write the other numbers. right? And you will again get the same projection but in negative values. So you will get minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1. M projections. Again, J project M projections from minus 4 to 0, it again tells you that they correspond to J is equal to 0. Okay? 
You see? Sorry, J is equal to 4. J is equal to 4 can have positions from M is equal to plus 4 to minus 4. Right? Now I have just shown you this part of the picture using these calculations. If you take on the negative values here, you will get the projection for M is equal to minus 4 to 0. And all of them just point out to the value of J is equal to 4. So this means that these calculations tell us that the two neutrons here in 1D5 now, they can have only three possible J values. What are they? 0, 2, 4. Eva Dako, ideally, what would have been the possibilities? Ideally, ki hote Ideally, 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 we should have J is equal to 5 by 2 plus 5 by 2 vector product, vector sum. So this means from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? So these are the values that ideally we should have. Kintu Amra Dekhte Pachi Ekhane that these values 1, 3 and 5. We are not getting. What does this mean? What does this mean? Bolo. You see, this entire M scheme that we have developed, it is following the rules of the Pauli's principle. Right? And following the rules of the Pauli's principle, we get mass and the symmetric states. So this means that the wave function corresponding to these even j values they are anti-symmetric okay and those corresponding to these odd values are symmetric so they correspond to bosonic if we have two bosons in j is equal to 5 half they will correspond to that symmetric wave function but here we have fermions so we have only this even values you can check that if we have two photons in J is equal to 5 half, okay, what would have been? Ki hote Anyway, so the moral of the story is this J is equal to 0 to 4, they are anti symmetric, they correspond to anti symmetric wave functions since we are following the Pauli's exclusion principle through this M scheme, okay. Next question. Now, next question. Suppose, let us consider 19 oxygen. 19 oxygen. So, this means 11 neutrons. Again, we are going to take 16 oxygen core and that time we will have how many neutrons? We will have 3 neutrons. Right? And so, we will have here one, two, three, three neutrons in J five half. Now I ask you to do these calculations right now and show me what will be the values of J. So we will consider three neutrons in J is equal to five half. So, we have done here the calculations for 3 neutrons in J is equal to 5 R. So let me just review this. So, we started by taking M1 is equal to 5 by 2. Now, the convention is that we keep on decreasing values M1, M2, M3. We keep on going decreasing values. Now, if you do not follow this convention, what you will happen is that there could be double counting and also the positive negative values will mix up. I will explain later on. So, if M1 is plus 5 by 2, M2 has to be lower than that plus 3 by 2. M3 has to be again lower than that plus half. Now, let me fix these two values and keep on decreasing. 
So minus half, minus 3 by 2, minus 5 by 2. That's all. Next, next, let me again fix this 5 by 2. Why I am talking about next? Because if I do the sum, you see, I have still not gotten below minus half. I have not got anything below my half. So we are still in positive side. So let me again fix this 5 by 2 and this time let me change from 3 by 2 to half then minus half correspondingly this gives me 5 by 2 again minus 3 half it gives me 3 by 2 and then minus 5 half over here this gives me half and after that again I will do the change I will do the change over here so now I am going to take minus half corresponding to minus 3 by 2 and this sum will give me half. Now you see here we have two sets. This 9, 7, 5, 3 and 1. This corresponds to j is equal to 9 by 2 set. And this value, these three values, they correspond to j is equal to 5 by 2 set. Okay? Two different sets. So now next time let me again, I have already exhausted all the values. And if I continue further by putting in the other values, I will keep on getting negative values. And those negative values are just the same thing. I will keep on getting negative values like minus 9 by 2, minus 7 by 2, minus 5 by 2, minus 3 by 2 and minus half. And they will be nothing but just the projections again for j is equal to 9 by 2. So I am not going to repeat that. I am going to keep on positive values of j. Okay? Positive values of j. Now let me uh, let us look over here. So now I'm going to change this m1 to 3 by 2. M2 is half. M3 minus half. This gives me 3 by 2. Next I'm doing minus 3 by 2. This gives me half. And after that again I will start getting negative value. I'm not going to go for that. So these are the all possibilities which give me only positive total n values. Right, and so from here we get this idea that using M scheme for three neutrons, which is equal to five half, we can have only three angular momentum possible. Three by two, five by two, nine by two. Okay, see for yourself. Three by two, five by two, nine by two. Fine. Now. The next question is, now I am not going to ask you what about 4 neutrons, right, in say 20 oxygen, it will be more harder. Instead, what I am going to ask you is something much more simple. So, what I am going to ask you is this, 22 oxygen, 22 oxygen, 8, how many neutrons, 16, 15, how much, how many neutrons, tell me, so I am again going to take 16 oxygen, 4, Plus, how many neutrons? Six neutrons. Okay, six neutrons. Now, something funny happens. So, the level above is 1d 5 by 2. Right, 1d5 by 2, think of it like this. So, all the 6 neutrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they will fall on this line. Something like that, okay? Right? Now, can you use any scheme to find the value of j? You remember, just now I told you, that the total angular momentum for a closed shell, field shell, will be zero. But can you use any scheme to do that? Let's see. So let me write down the values m1, m2, 
M3, M4, M5, M6 and then total M. Okay, total M. So let's start from here. M1. What is M1? 5 by 2. What is M2? Lower. 3 by 2. Next, half. Next, minus half. Next, minus 3 by 2. Next, minus 5 by 2. Now sum it all. What do you get? 0. This corresponds to J is equal to 0. Very interesting. But very powerful tool. You don't have to do quantum mechanics here at all. You see, just by simple addition and keeping in mind the Pauli's exclusion principle, you can get this idea that a filled shell, basically, you don't even have to talk about the inert core. Basically, the thing applies to a filled shell. Right? The filled shell, you see, this level is filled, J is equal to 5 half, all the 6 neutrons, and they give you J is equal to 0. And when we say, when we say that the inner core basically contributes 0, what we mean to say using M scheme is that each level, it is contributing 0. Using this M scheme, you can check each level, right? The two, new, two neutrons, four neutrons, two neutrons, all of them are filled. So they all contribute 0 independently. 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. And here also, you see the same thing. Mustafa Chah.